Death Stranding is a game that inherently lends itself to intense story analysis features and videos, and we've done about a quintillion of those ourselves. But that's because, from the moment the game was first unveiled right up to now, even after multiple new trailers, and many of those being quite lengthy, there's still one question that we've not stopped asking about the game. What the hell is it even about? What the hell is a question that we like asking a lot here at Gaming Bolt, but rarely is it ever as fitting as it's always been for Death Stranding. But impossibly enough, after this year's Gamescom, it started to feel like we've a relatively clearer picture of just what Death Stranding is about. Not just in terms of gameplay, but also in terms of story. Many of these narrative strands we've been able to connect already, as we've discussed at length in many previous analyses. A lot of these theories have started looking likelier now, while new information has also come to light. We got three new trailers for Death Stranding at Gamescom, one of which was more gameplay oriented than anything else, but the trailer we're going to talk about first is, funnily enough, the one that the vast majority of people haven't seen yet. At their Gamescom booth, Sony were showing a trailer for the game called Briefing, which, true to its name, lay down plenty of groundwork for just what it is that we're going to be doing in Kojima's upcoming game. The trailer shows a cutscene from what seems to be the game's introduction, taking place in the Oval Office. Bridget, the president of the USA, or UCA, who was lying sick and old in a bed in the Oval Office in the release date trailer, doesn't seem to be in the picture anymore. And it seems Emily, played by Lindsay Wagner, is now in charge, and is also Bridget's daughter. Emily started a project years ago to reconnect the fractured cities of the United Cities of America by convincing isolated cities to join the UCA's chiral network. All of this is essentially adding in more detail to things that we've already figured out by now. In the release date trailer of the game, Sam is told to quote, finish what Emily started by reconnecting the fractured cities of America, and thanks to the Gamescom gameplay trailer and Sam's conversation with the Ludens fan guy, we know that that's done by Sam inserting his floating necklace thing, which is known as a Q-pip, into terminals to allow isolated cities to join the UCA's chiral network. So what is the chiral network though? Well, it's something that's been casually mentioned in Death Stranding a couple of trailers and a few times now. And though we don't yet have a concrete explanation for what it is, we can deduce its nature. To me, it sounds like Death Stranding's high science fiction version of the internet. Not literally, but something along those lines. Sam's primary mission, first and foremost, is to literally reconnect the cities of America, which have isolated themselves either through necessity or through fear, and by reconnecting them to the UCA's chiral network, Sam and the people that he's working with can propagate the message that they are not alone, and that standing together they can better survive whatever catastrophe has struck the world. Interestingly enough, another thing we now know thanks to this behind closed doors trailer is that Emily can also no longer age, and she looks the same as she did when Sam met her last, which was 10 years ago. Her body, Sam is told, is still on the beach, which means she's stranded between our world and the other side, the realm of death that we've been hearing about since the game's release date trailer. This lines up with the E3 2018 trailer when Emily was first introduced. We saw her on the beach. What it doesn't line up with is what she said when she was first introduced, which was essentially along the lines of Sam not remembering who she is. And this does raise some questions. How does he not remember who she is when she looks exactly like she did when Sam last saw her? And we know that they have a history together because that's something else that we learned from the briefing trailer. Sam worked with Die Hardman and Emily many years ago and it ended in some sort of failure which Sam blames on the two of them. Maybe the explanation is something as simple as the trailer was using an audio clip out of context. But given that this is a Kojima game, I kinda doubt that. And that's not all that's mystifying about Emily. She really is a mysterious character. Her soul, or whatever you want to call it, might be on the beach, but physically it seems that she's in Edge Not City. Remember that? Yep, that's the city under the control of the militaristic and separatist terrorist group known as the Homo Daemons, led by Higgs, who is played by Troy Baker. In the briefing trailer, Emily speaks with Sam through a hologram and she tells him that she's not being kept there as a prisoner, even though she was taken captive by the Homo Daemons, and she doesn't have to sneak off somewhere to send him a secret message. No, she seems to have complete freedom to speak with him and use the city's facilities, which is kind of weird because that seems to go against the very fiber of everything that we've seen of the Homo Daemons so far. In previous trailers, we've seen Emily slung across Higgs' shoulders, we've seen Higgs and his crew being called terrorists who kill people and cause void outs, and we've seen Higgs insisting that Edge Not City is going to remain independent and yet Emily, while in Edge Not City, is telling Sam to reconnect all the cities of America. So just what the hell is going on here? Well, one very simple explanation is that for some reason, the Homo Daemons want Emily and Sam to enact their plan, because that figures into their own plan somehow, whatever those might be. Perhaps they're trying to lure out Sam and want to use him for something, and figure that him doing Emily's bidding might be a great way to get that done. Maybe they figure Sam and the others might come running to Edge Not City to rescue Emily, where they might be waiting to spring an ambush. But let's move on for now and talk about the trailers that we all did see at Gamescom. 
For starters, there was a character spotlight trailer with Deadman, played by Guillermo del Toro, who seems to be the BB expert for the organization Sam is working with, or Bridges. Deadman explains to Sam how BBs are easily stressed, and this can only be remedied by replicating the conditions of the wombs of their still mothers, more on this in a bit, through pods. From a gameplay perspective, that's interesting because it suggests that the BB's stress level will be something that we're going to have to keep an eye on and regularly fix by visiting terminals with pods in them, and then connecting BBs to said pods. What's interesting from a story perspective is the exchange Deadman and Sam have about BBs and their nature. Deadman explains to Sam that BBs are just equipment and warns him not to get too attached, and also tells him that his BB will probably soon have to be retired. Sam looks visibly unhappy, but there's no way to save his BB, and it's clear that this is going to be an important plot point. The gameplay trailer showed and Gamescom also shows Sam soothing his BB by rocking its pod, and all of it seems to suggest that despite being told to simply treat it as nothing more than equipment, Sam is going to get attached to his BB. This is where Cliff figures in as well. In what capacity, we're not really sure, but there are definitely some dots to connect here. Notice the shot at the specific point at 2 minutes and 12 seconds. The shot itself, as well as the BB blinking, all looks awfully familiar to when we saw Cliff, played by Mads Mikkelsen, speaking with BB in the release date announcement trailer, and we could easily glean from that conversation that Cliff, too, had grown attached to his BB. We've also theorized before that Cliff previously used to work with the members of Bridges in some way, and that looks even more likely now. Perhaps that was indeed the case, and there were conflicts between Cliff and the others regarding BBs, their nature, and how they should be treated. Perhaps that conflict is what led to Cliff going rogue. Or maybe, and this is a bit out there, those soldiers with Cliff are grown up BBs, connected to him through umbilical cords? It wouldn't be too crazy, seeing as we've actually seen Cliff connected to his soldiers with umbilical cords, and because we keep seeing those creepy baby doll figures around Cliff. Cliff also has that strange scar on his stomach, and he also seems to have some sort of a connection to the other side. And we know now that people are able to connect to the other side only through BBs. The connections here are a bit hazy, all of this could be wildly inaccurate, but it feels like it's all connected nonetheless. Dead Man's Spotlight trailer also gives us some pretty important background information on BBs, where they come from and how they function. They're all born from brain-dead mothers who are called still mothers, and thanks to that they have this connection to the other side, because their mothers themselves are stranded between life and death to some extent. All these mothers are physically located in a place called Capital Knot City, not Edge Knot City, just to be clear. And Capital Knot, it seems, is also the hub of the UCA's chiral network. The obvious implication here is that Capital Knot City is, as the name suggests, the capital of the UCA. What's more interesting is the implication this backstory has on BBs and their creation. Thanks to the BBs' unusual births and their connection to the other side, people are able to plug into them and sense BTs from the other side as well. Does this mean that Bridges, and perhaps others, are, to put it simply, manufacturing BBs specifically for that purpose? Well, we know that they view them as just equipment, so it's clear that they have a pretty cold outlook on them. So does this also mean that they're purposefully rendering women brain dead just so they can give birth to BBs? That's some pretty dark stuff, but then again, Kojima is no stranger to dark stuff, and it's beginning to look like these moral quandaries might play some role in Death Stranding's story. Speaking of some pretty messed up stuff, let's move on to Mama's character, Spotlight Trailer. The appropriately named Mama, because she has a daughter who's actually a BT. Yeah, Mama's daughter is stuck on the other side and is connected to her through a ghostly umbilical cord, which means that Mama is physically stranded in the same place and cannot leave. There's a lot here that needs explaining, which Kojima is probably not gonna do, but a few things are clear. Mama and her daughter seem to be the opposite of still mothers. While still mothers are dead, or half-dead women who give birth to live babies, Mama is a live woman whose daughter is stuck on the other side. One would also assume, based on Mama's connection and constant proximity to her daughter, that she seems to be immune to the BTs somehow. At least that's what logic would dictate, right? Or at least whatever it is in this wacky game that passes for logic. One thing that we can say for sure is that Mama doesn't need to plug into a BB to be able to sense BTs. She can do it all naturally thanks to her daughter. Either way, it's clear that Mama and her daughter are going to have a very important role to play in the game. So after all is said and done, after all the information that's come out of Gamescom, we know a lot more about Death Stranding's story than we ever did, which is funny because there's still so much that we don't know. We don't know how fragile figures into the story. We don't know anything about Cliff and what his deal is. We don't know whatever caused the catastrophe with the BTs in the first place, and that's just off the top of my head. Either way, the fundamental stuff, at the very least, is starting to become a little more clear. The hope now remains that we'll receive at least one, or maybe even two more trailers that'll lift the fog surrounding this game just a little bit more. If there's anything that you think that we've missed or anything that you think that we've interpreted inaccurately, please let us know via your comments. And if and when we get new trailers that reveal some more story stuff, you know we'll be here with another obsessive analysis video, so stay tuned. And that wraps it up. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing to our channel. We upload new videos daily. Also, don't forget to switch on the bell notification icon, that way you don't miss out on any of our videos.